so dear brothers uh, in christ so few weeks uh, before we studied about the church you see now who is the church uh, we saw uh, you see the faithful ones uh, who are uh, you see uh, walking the path of uh, jesus christ uh, they are called as the true church as per the bible so we saw uh, what is their number we saw that uh, their number is uh, 1,44,000. That is given to us in uh, Revelation 14 chapter. But uh, in uh, Revelation 7 chapter, it is mentioned as uh, they are set up from the tribes of Israel. We also saw that uh, this uh, 12 tribes of Israel that is mentioned in Revelation 7 chapter is not a little, uh, you see, tribes of uh, Israel. Just as speaking about the spiritual Israel, there are two types of Israel in the Bible. One is the fleshly Israel, another is the spiritual Israel. So the fleshly Israel is the people who were living during the days of Jesus at uh, first advent, while the spiritual Israel are the true church. Therefore, if you see in Revelation 7 chapter, the tribe's name, if you are given, the first tribe name is mentioned as Judah, because uh, Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. So Jesus is the head of the church. Hence, uh, this uh, group is gathered from all over the world. In Revelation 14 chapter is very clearly given that in verse 3 that they are redeemed from uh, earth, uh, all over the world, not only from Israel. So, these are the people who are going to remain faithful to God until their death. You see, come what may, they are uh, in the image of Christ. Uh, you see, and to be, uh, you see, they are the people who are going to reign with Christ for a thousand years. Therefore, if you see it, if then this uh, lakh and 44,000 actually seems to be a very small uh, number. But if you see how many people are selected in this 2024 years, nearly average it is 71% per year. And six months, uh, sorry, six persons uh, have been selected average per month. That means every five day, you see, one person is being selected. So that is... Uh, you see, the lakh and 44,000. So, dear brethren, apart from, uh, you see, this uh, lakh and 44,000, is there no group uh, that goes to uh, heaven to be with our Lord, to rule with our Lord? Because when we studied, uh, you see, the divine plan, we also saw that uh, this is the people who consecrate their life to the Lord. Uh, so, we have studied about the group called as Zen, that is a faithful clues, class of people. But what about the people who are uh, consecrated but who fail to prove their uh, faithfulness to God? Uh, so what about them? Uh, you see, the chosen people, the group called as M uh, in this chart. Uh, dear brethren, uh, you see, these uh, are the people, you see, who are uh, also consecrated their life, uh, who, who exchange this earthly life for the heavenly life. Uh, so what about them? So, David, then the Bible speaks uh, about uh, another group of people, you see, who are taken to heaven, you see, for the heavenly salvation. So, let us read about them today in Revelation 7, chapter, verse 9. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read Revelation 7, chapter, verse 9? Okay, after <clears throat> this I beheld and... Uh, and a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and uh, kinders and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with the white drops and plums in their hands. Here, a group of people are shown, that is uh, called as a great multitude, which no man can number from all the nations of this world. Even then, don't you think that uh, even God cannot number? You see, God can of course number, but he says that no man can number. Uh, what does it mean? That means uh, uh, this uh, group uh, is an unlimited uh, group. That means uh, any number of people can consecrate and exchange their earthly life uh, to the heavenly life. But uh, you see, the crown and the prize will be given only for the one lakh and forty-four thousand. These are selected from all nations. You see, kindreds, people, and tongues. But uh, here it says uh, they were standing before the throne. You see, 
what is the promise that God has uh, given to the church? If we are faithful, you see, dear brethren, you see, the reward for the faithful church is that they are going to rule with Christ by sitting with him on the throne and not uh, stand before them and, uh, you see, rule. So let us read uh, Revelation 3.21, brother. Okay. To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and I am set down with my father in his throne. Very good, brother. See, here it says, what did Jesus promise to the church? To him that overcometh, I will grant him to sit with me in my throne. You see, even as I also overcame, and uh, sat down with my father in his throne. That means Jesus overcome and uh, he is uh, sitting on the throne of the father. And who can sit uh, next to him on his throne? Not everybody. Only those who overcome dear brother. And this is the promise which God has promised to the church that they are going to sit on the throne, not stand before the throne. Therefore, this uh, great multitude uh, standing before the throne means they have lost the crown. They have lost that kingship. You see, dear brethren, we need to overcome even as Jesus overcome. You see, in our life, uh, there will be a lot of obstacles. Uh, you see, a lot of problems will come. You see, a lot of trials will come. But uh, all these things we need to fight and we need to overcome. Dear brethren, just uh, think and uh, remember and see the life of Jesus so Jesus on the bed of roses, no, he had trials, he had temptations, he had severe, you see, uh, persecutions, a uh, lot of problems were there. But uh, Jesus never grumbled. Uh, Jesus never regretted. Uh, you see, dear brother, he had faith on the Lord. Uh, he overcome everything cheerfully, voluntarily, he laid himself uh, on the altar of God. Uh, voluntarily, he sacrificed everything uh, which was uh, pleasing. Uh, uh, aroma to God, dear brethren. So this is the spirit which the lack and 44,000 overcome. But the great multitude, you see, they lack the spirit of overcoming. Instead of overcoming, they grumble. They don't uh, sacrifice voluntarily. They sacrifice when they are compelled to do so. Dear brethren, there is a difference. You see, sacrificing voluntarily and sacrificing forcefully. So those who do, uh, those who sacrifice forcefully, you see, dear brethren, are the people, you see, uh, who are not uh, completely zealous uh, to the Lord. Therefore, you see, a lot of trials will come, a lot of tests will come, so that uh, we don't sacrifice. Uh, but this is a test uh, to prove our faithfulness to God. You see, what did Apostle Paul tell in uh, Romans 8 chapter? He tells uh, a lot of, uh, you see, things that comes to separate us from the love of Christ. What are the list? Let us read Romans 8, chapter 35 to 37, brother. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation or distress or prosecution or for mine or nakedness or prill or sword as it is written for the sake of we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sea for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquered through him that love us. Very good, brother. See, it says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. All these are the trials which will come to God's children in the life these things are a test uh, that will draw us away from Christ, dear brethren. But uh, in all these things, uh, you see, how should we face it? Uh, Apostle Paul tells that uh, we are accounted as a sheep for the slaughter. Yes, for Christ's sake, uh, we are considered as a sheep for the slaughter. Uh, in all these things, dear brethren, we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors are the people who voluntarily sacrifice uh, dedicating the life to do the Lord's will. This is 
the difference between the lakh and 44,000 and the great multitude. You see, the majority of the great multitude, because of fear, because of lack of fear, and lack of love on the Lord, you see, they don't draw near to Lord. You see, they seek the Lord only when they are in trouble. You see, but uh, when there is, uh, everything is good, they don't search the Lord at all, dear brethren. You see, therefore, they are before the throne. They're not sitting on the throne. You see, each and every moment, our face should be looking to the Father's face for His grace, for His mercy. You see, whenever a trial comes for us to fear, we need to overcome in Christ's name. But this, uh, you see, the great multitude, they fear it. Read Hebrews 2.15, brother. Hebrews 2.15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subjects to bondage. See, fear of death. Uh, you see, it's not so easy to die. You see, voluntarily, that fear of death is a Satan which has hold everybody in his grip, in his deception. Okay, that is the reason they had palm branches in their hand. Now, what is the meaning of palm branches? You see, dear brethren, when Jesus uh, was welcomed to Jerusalem. Everybody welcomed him with uh, palm branches saying, Osana, Osana to the king of uh, Israel. You see, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Now, in olden days, whenever a king is to come victoriously after defeating his enemies, you see, he used to be welcomed with uh, palm branches in their hand. Like, for example, how David was welcomed when he killed the Philistines. Uh, uh, people cried, uh, Saul killed uh, 10,000, but David killed 10,000. Even Jesus was welcomed the same way. So the palm branches are meaning a sign of victory. But how did they overcome? They did not know. And they did not overcome voluntarily. But they are overcome when they are compelled, when they are forced to do it. You see, that is the reason they are standing before the throne. And it also says they are wearing white robes. What is this white robe? The same question was asked to the angel by the elder. Revelation 7 chapter verse 13 and 14, brother. Huh? And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are the these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence come they? And I said unto him, Sir, through noest and he said to me these are the which come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb very good he says see who are these uh, that are on the white robes you see and uh, why are they arrayed in white robes sir? the answer is given that uh, these are they which are come out of great tribulation and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of lamb. That means what? That means white robes were given. Now it has become dirty. That is the reason they have washed it with the blood of Christ. And again it has become white. Now what is this white robe? Dear brethren, white always in the Bible represents purity. You see, we are all uh, sinful. And all our uh, good deeds before God are as filthy rags. But because of Christ's sacrifice... Because of accepting Christ as a personal savior, we are put on that robe upon ourselves. You see, now we are pure in God's sight. Isn't it? That is a robe of righteousness, a robe of justification, which we receive once we accept Jesus as a personal savior. Read uh, Isaiah 64, 6, brother. But we are all as an unclean things, and all our righteousness are as flirty rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. You see, all our righteousness are as water, filthy rags. Remember when Adam sinned, you see, he was covering with a fig leaves. Eh, what did God do? He sacrificed the lamb and gave him a, you see, a skin cloth, a cloth made out of skin. You see, that means 
a permanent righteousness which we gave it after accepting Jesus as our Savior. Let us read Isaiah 61, 10, brother, and Revelation 19, 8. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridge grooms digs himself with the uh, ornaments and as a br bride uh, ordered herself with her jewels. You see? He has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has clothed me with a robe of righteousness, dear brethren. Hence, the white robe represents the righteousness, the justification which you receive from Christ. Revelation 19, 8, brother. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine line, clean and white, for his fine line is the righteousness of saints. Yes, you see, that is the righteousness of the saints, dear brethren. So, once we accept Christ, God would give us the robe of righteousness. Now, this one we need to maintain and clean. You see, we should uh, cleanly keep it, maintain that purity. How do we maintain? You see, we are living in the world. Whenever we think uh, something wrong, whenever we speak something wrong, whenever we do something wrong, which is hurting to God, which is against God's will, in this white robe, a black spot comes on this uh, cloth, you see, on this robe. And what happens to the robe? Is it good to see? A white robe with a black spots here and there? No. So immediately we need to go to the Lord in prayer and cleanse it. Like can 44,000 do this one as soon as they realize their mistake. You see, and correct themselves, dear brethren. You see, they correct themselves. You see, they rectify their mistakes. They plead for God's grace and mercy and God forgives him. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. You see, but this has to be done then and there itself. But the great multitude, they don't do it. Because they don't even realize that there is a mistake which are grieved against God's Holy Spirit. You see, they grumble against it. Instead of cleansing the robe, they leave it like that only. Imagine if a white shirt or some small black spot is there, if you can clean it, what will happen? Immediately, it will be cleaned you see, it is very easy to clean when this uh, spot is very small. You see, but if you neglect it, uh, if you let it l l be like that only, what will happen? Uh? You see, that stain will remain like that only. It won't go so easily, dear brethren. Now, if you keep on neglecting stain upon stain, what will happen? Uh? Entire cloth will become dirty. Then we can't wash it ourselves. Uh. Where should we give it? We need to give it to the dobi. Dry clean. What will they do? They will put it in washing soda, put all the chemicals, hit very hard against a rock until the stains are completely gone. This is what God is also going to do us if we don't maintain that robe of righteousness neat and clean in the image of Christ. You see, that gets completely dirty. You see, dear brethren, we are put into troubles in our life. Lot of persecutions, troubles and all will come in our life. You see, so that when troubles come, we will draw near to the Lord. We will appreciate His sacrifice and His blood and realize our mistake, you see, and uh, become like Christ, clean and neat. Read Malachi 3rd chapter, verse 2 and 3, brother. Peter, brother, you there? But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and pour them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord in offering in righteousness. Yes. You see, here it says that Jesus uh, shall sit... Uh, like a refiner's fire and a fuller soap. What is a fuller soap? You see, 
that is the soap which uh, Dobi uses, washing soda. You see, we use light detergent in the house, but in Dobi Ghat, you see, dry clean, they use harsh chemicals. Where the, you see, the clothes are uh, completely, you see, made clean, very harsh way. Similarly, Jesus cleanses us. How? By putting us into trouble. Lot of trouble will come in their life. You see, they, it may be health, uh, sickness, uh, finance, uh, you see, or a family problem. Various problems will come so that, uh, you see, they may come near to the Lord. In the trouble, they may seek the Lord and remain faithful to the Lord. But uh, these people will lose their crown. You see, they will uh, try to prove faithfulness. But how? As if uh, saved by fire. You see, they will lose their reward. But they will be saved. They will be taken to the heavenly salvation. But not for that lack and 44,000. But not for that divine nature. But to be of the great multitude like Angels in heaven. Read First Corinthians third chapter eleven to fifteen. Hmm. For other for foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon his foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's works abide which he, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved as so as by fire. You see? Jesus is the foundation. Upon this foundation, we need to build our character. Now, how the character can be built? It can be built uh, with various uh, types of materials. You see, some with gold, uh, silver and precious stones. Some with wood, uh, hay and stubble. You see, to build a house uh, with uh, gold, is it so easy? Tell me, is it so easy or so expensive? To build it in gold. Expensive. Expensive. To build it with brick only is so difficult. Build with gold means not at all possible. So if we have to build with gold, silver, precious stones, so much of dedication we need. So much of sacrifice we need. Go and ask to some person who has built a house. You will tell, oh, you, I have spent all my life. I spent my blood. Though. I have poured my blood for building this house. So much of sacrifice they would have done, no? Same way, to build Christ-likeness, the gold-like image, you see, the precious stone-like image that glitters like Jesus, is not so easy. We need to spend a lot. You see, we need to give a lot of uh, sacrifice, deny ourselves a lot of things to be unselfish. The selfish character has to be thrown out from us. But some people, they do it. But some people, they don't do it. They think that uh, they are building it. No, oh, no, no, they're not building it. They're destroying their character. It will be like wood, hay and stubble. That means how? Their character won't be see, so firm. It will be like a small wood. If you build, build a house in wood, hay and grass, will it withstand the weather? Will it be forever? No. It will be there only for a few days. Then it will go forever. What does the Bible say? God says that each and every character that is developed, it will be tested by fire. How shall it be tested by fire? It shall be put into the furnace. You see, it shall be put into the furnace. We shall be put into trials, fiery trials, from morning till evening. When the trials come, if our character is being destroyed, if we are losing our character, you see, if we are, uh, you see, losing our temper, misbehaving, that shows. What character we built is not correct at all. We're not built upon gold. We're not built upon, you see, silver. We're not built upon with the precious stone, but we're built like wood, hay, and grass. As soon as the fire comes in contact with these six items, which will burn first, if you see, grass. 
next uh, you see hey next is wood but the gold silver and precious stone doesn't burn this means if we are soon very soon losing our character that means we are uh, not proving faithfulness to god that means the character which uh, we built uh, is not a strong character it's a very weak character it is gone what will happen to such persons he is uh, bible says you see he shall not receive a reward he shall lose a reward but uh, yet uh, he shall be saved as so by fire dear brethren he shall be saved as if he is saved by a fire imagine if a person is caught in a fire if he is rescued if his life is saved how will he be will he be the same old person his body would be half burnt you won't look the same person dear brethren similarly the reward of the divine nature the reward to rule with christ for a thousand years these people will lose it. therefore dear brethren god permits these people god hand over these people who are not dedicated to the lord's words who are not obedient to the lord's words who no was no zeal was no much interest in god's words god himself hand over them to the hands of the devil read first corinthians 5:5 five, five. to deliver us and one on to satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the lord jesus you see huh? what will god do is him god himself shall deliver such a person to satan is him imagine we have escaped from satan and come to the lord if lord himself hand over us to satan what will satan do first of all you will be waiting to eagerly catch us if lord himself gives us to satan he will really grind us you see he will pinch us like anything give us lot of troubles dear brethren why god will allow it god won't protect us he will permit it why so that the flesh might be destroyed flesh means what not this human body the fleshly character might be destroyed and the spirit the new spirit the holy spirit the new creature which is in christ image that might be saved dear brethren so this great multitude is actually the destruction of the flesh but the lack and 44000 is a sacrifice of the flesh so ultimately we need to leave this fleshly character here itself and go is it even so hence they lost the fight a good fight of faith you see they lose the reward they will go stand before the lord not sit with him on the throne and what will god do to them read revelation 7 chapter 15 to 17 therefore are they before the throne of god and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sit on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more neither thirst any more neither shall the sun light on them nor the heat for the lamb which is in the midst midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of the waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes yes you see dear brethren they shall serve the lord you why serve the lord before the throne because they did not serve the lord now faithfully unto death hence they are before the throne now serving the lord because they lost the opportunity you see neglected the opportunity when god had given to them dear brethren hence uh, you see there are uh, before the throne and they will weep but what will god uh, you see do god can only wipe away their tears dear brethren why they are weeping why they crying because they lost the crown imagine when you put all our efforts uh, you see try to get a very good result in our exams uh, but ultimately when the exams come when the results come you see we realize that we are uh, failed how how pathetic uh, it will be how discouraging how sad it will be for us dear brethren it is the same way for this great multitude when god has given us the opportunity they did not prove faithfulness hence they are weeping before the throne dear brethren so they lost the prize therefore dear brethren the trials are there in the life you see jesus said 
you see ha huh? there are trials ha huh? oh, don't worry i'll give you the peace not as the world gives her read but john 1633 these things i have spoken unto you that in my in me a might have peace in the world as shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world see in this world uh, you shall have tribulation not that you may have don't worry nothing will happen no no it says you shall have that is a must he definitely will have tribulation but don't worry i have overcome the world i will help you to also overcome the world dear brethren that is uh, you see god's uh, grace uh, this uh, only the little flock sees god's mercy upon them they have faith in the lord that god will protect them but the great multitude they see the tribulation trials difficulties in a different way they take it as a very heavy burden and lose faith on the lord hence they lose the crown dear brethren this is the second class of people who go to the heavenly salvation dear brethren so there are two class of people who go to the heavenly salvation that is the church in the church there are two divisions one is the little flock you see the lack and 44000 other is a great multitude you see huh? they stand before the throne as angels while the little flock the lack and 44000 are like jesus sitting on the throne and rule with him for a thousand years dear brethren still we have an opportunity god has called us to the truth if our eyes and ears have opened god has given us the opportunity you see to run this race dear brethren so let us try to prove faithfulness to the lord and with all our heart to soul and mind in complete dedication in full zeal let us show interest in god's words so study and try to remain faithful to him to understand his will and to do his will dear brethren until our death so that we can win the crown you see so many people have the desire that uh, at least uh, let me see jesus once you see let us not lose this opportunity to just like uh, some worldly things worldly blessings and be careless in our consecration you see uh, may lord bless these words if anybody has got any doubts any questions can please ask thank you vishnu brother any questions brother no brother thank you it was a very wonderful blessing message thank you thank you Okay, Lord's grace, brother. Thank you, Peter, brother. Any doubts? Any questions? Nothing. Thank you. Okay, and last, uh, Bishnu, brother, can you offer a prayer? Yes, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus, we worship you. We thank you. We glorify your name.